Does that make me unholy? Hi, sweethearts. How are you? It's a little bit early. You guys like this? It's about love because Christ is love. God is love. So do we, are we to think that God created all these beautiful love songs, all these beautiful poetry pieces, all these beautiful dances, all these beautiful art instruments that we sit there and listen to? I'm coming up. I mean, when are you going to have an opportunity to be free? If you're free indeed, then when are you going to be free? What if you and your spouse or, or your boyfriend or someone you were dating decided you want to go to a dance and listen to some music? I'm too holy for that. I can't go. And then I'm going to dump him because he's not holy either. He's not holy. He's not a good man. Well, let's just go back to the scriptures that we looked at. Firstly, didn't daddy say that we need to be seeking the kingdom first? Not a holy, godly man. Not a holy, not a long dress. Not all these accolades of backwards collars. No, we don't need to be seeking that. We need to be seeking the kingdom. And as someone seeking the kingdom, first thing we need to know is that I am a queen and you are a princess or you are a duchess and you are a duke and you are a king and you are a lord. So once I get that understanding of myself that I am, that my daddy is the king of kings, the lord of lords, and that I am going to be called to be a high priest, okay, with the ephah, <laughs> with the ephod, you know. Once I realize that I'm royalty, then I will begin to take on certain royal attributes. Okay, so that trumps any of me trying to look for anybody godly. What is godly? Once I know that I'm royal, if my father is a king and I'm honoring him as a king, then I need to honor myself as a royal. So that's why it's far more important for us to be looking in the kingdom for our role rather than looking into the world for what they consider a, a godly. Because then you could turn into a Sadducee or a Pharisee. And then you're basically running behind people that are in church. And a lot of these men that are in church have a whole plethora of problems because there's so many women in there looking at him and they see him as this oracle of holiness. And he's a man, just like everybody else. But he is called to do something great. And a lot of great men fall very harshly, especially when they're serving in the church. And I want you to understand, you guys got your tea? I want you guys to understand that mint majesty, you guys, no sugar, you guys. We always have tea here. When you're serving in the church versus serving in the world, I did um, prayer on a reggae radio station. I work with girls that are in a dance hall. I married a man that was not a believer. He was my childhood sweetheart. And I went on, I did go through counseling. We did get our family counsel. We did all of that. But I based that on the fact that I knew his mother was a very staunch missionary. In fact, his mother was married on the same day. His mother was, well, yes, yeah, she was married into the kingdom of God. But she was born on my birthday, February 24th. And... I kind of stood on that word because I know he lost his faith due to being incarcerated for many years. So all this to say is that if you're involved with someone and they may not be the beacon of holiness or godliness, but that's your spouse. Don't allow people to make you think that you need this godly man that's in church every Sunday and that you should leave your spouse and, oh, why me? Why I got this man? Everybody, oh, you guys, please don't take any pictures because it stops the it stops the video. You may send hearts, please. But in order for the tutelage to go completely, it has no pictures, okay? Love you guys. As many hearts as you want, I love those. So you want to make sure that Whoever the spouse that you're with, that you're appreciating him. Because if you're in the kingdom, then guess what? You sanctify him. And a lot of people don't realize Christ loves love music. That's how one of the ways that he brought me through my childhood issues that I had. A lot of feelings of being lost. I always wanted a family. I always wanted a complete family. And that's what a lot of young girls and men want all their lives. It's family. Especially the men that have been incarcerated Undo, undo justice. A lot of things have happened to us as people. So as there are a lot of things that 
have happened to us as people, we are going to have a lot of different emotions and we're going to feel a lot of different ways. And there's going to be a lot of things that we have to work on. And firstly, let me just clarify right here. The first commandment is to love the God, love God with all your heart and all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. But if you don't love you, if I love myself 5%, how much can I love you? So yes, there are times when you have to pull yourself aside and take some time to learn to love you. If you're married, when I used to go to church, when I, when I lived in Jamaica with my, with my husband, I'd be at church, come home from church, these people screaming and shouting and yelling all over the place. I did enjoy it sometimes, and I'm not putting down church. There is a particular place for each and every one of us to worship. No, do not forsake the counsel of your brethren, but the church is you. I can worship right now. I'm worshiping right now. I'm serving. I'm amongst my brothers and my sisters right now. But I get out of church, and I come home. I come home, take the bus home in Jamaica. I take the bus home, and I walk into my apartment, my, my place with my, my husband, and my husband would have a big pot of rice and peas on the stove, and he'd have had washed all of his clothing for the work week. So I come in from church. He's already got the dinner set. He's got himself ready for work. What makes him any less of a godly man than the men that were running around the service, the few, the few men that were there? He was home. He was cooking. He was coming home every night. What makes him any less a valuable of a godly man than other people. Don't give up on the person that God has put you with. Don't give up on the person that you love. Now, I'm not saying I am a chastity child. Yes, I do say do not have sex before marriage because that opens your heart. And it also opens portals where you can find yourself and your, your future spouse falling short. And you find yourself in levels of temptation, and not only levels of temptation, but you also find yourself playing married when you're not. And also that shortens the length of time that you would have to really get a chance to know each other and fortify each other, just you and that person. Once you introduce intimacy into that, it totally throws out other levels that the relationship can grow and prosper in. That is your gift to your spouse and your spouse's gift to you. You want to be able to give that unreserved and without any calamity or concern. So the final thing I want to say, and I'll do a part two on this. Marriage is, is business. It's business in the kingdom of God. It's business to my dad. My dad's main concern is you me his children so if he has to allow us to fall in love with particular people and if you can work together so that you're freely using the testimony and helping other couples learn to stay together and other people that may be attracted to people that are not godly they're his children too why are they any less viable as a spouse unless they're beating the mess out of you or cheating on you and risking your life and all kind of crazy things? Yes, yeah, space and time can be needed and also that's a good indication for, indicator for you to know not to marry this person. But God is love. You guys like this song? I love you, Deja. Give me all your love. What's unholy about that song? Why wouldn't God like this song? He'll kiss her anywhere, especially there. Did not God create intimacy? God created sex. If I'm married, then yes, I'm going to be performing my wifely <laughs> duties. Are you kidding me? Why do we have to make these things seem ugly? They're not ugly. There are levels of intimacy. You, you know how, remember, you know, somebody would like pulse the inside of your finger, your hand, like take their hand and just, and people, we said, oh, that means that he wants to have sex with you where he takes his thumb and rubs inside the center of your hand. What if I told you that's a relaxing technique to relax yourself and put yourself to sleep? It's not nasty. Okay. God is love. So please don't be intimidated by people that are trying to put on holiness, put on 
righteousness. No, put on your royalty. Put on that royalty. Put on that queendom. I married my, my husband as a three-year virgin, okay, reborn, <laughs> okay? And that didn't make me any less viable because I was seeking the kingdom. And guess what? There's no condemnation for them that are in Christ. None. So nobody can condemn you. And if anybody has, tell them, oh, thank God for the blood and keep it moving. I love you. It's Chastity Child. Talk to you later.